Hi, welcome to Muse for our last episode, web episode of uh, 2012. And we're here with Raul Pacheco of Ozo Motley. How's everything going? Good. We're in the dress room. It's kind of fun. And exactly. Dress, you just can't see that on the <laughs> camera. Yeah, we could change the camera around and turn it around and show everybody, but we're not going to do that. Yeah. Uh, so how's everything been going on the tour? It's cool. You know, we're always playing gigs all over the place. We're a little tired. Yesterday we were in Park City, Utah. Before that we were in Mexico City. Before that, we were in El Paso, so we're just getting around, playing music. Yeah. Very cool, very cool. Um, one thing to bring up is uh, Ozo Kids. Yeah. The album has actually been very popular. iTunes has been loving it, everybody has been buying it. Where did all that come from? Uh, you know, it just, it I think uh, we got into some situations with fans who, we kept getting enough messages saying, uh, we can't go to the show because we can't get a babysitter. <laughs> we just, it came up, our drummer brought it up, it just seemed to keep coming up. And then mm -hmm. we looked into it and it seemed like it was something that was actually worthwhile and would be fun to do. There was half of us, I'd say, who were kind of uh, like reluctant a little bit, like maybe, uh, do we really want to do this? And then there was others who were like, let's try it. So once we de decided to do it, um, it turned out to be really fun. And, uh, you know, it took a while, but I think the songs were actually... It was fun for us to get out of what we do as our adult selves to get into like different kinds of songs, different, even more different styles, and it ended up being a lot of fun. So I mean, when we get to play with the kids, I think that was the thing that sold it to when we had our first kids shows. Just these young kids, like just enjoying themselves. I think it turned out to be something that was real good. Yeah, and uh, you had a show earlier today at yeah. two o'clock with uh, the Ozo Kids performance. Yeah. How did that go today at the Grand? It was Museum? cool. I think it was the best show. Uh, in terms of the flow, you know, because it's a whole different audience. It's like, it may seem like it's uh, like you don't have to care too much or something, but you, you, you really do. And kids kind of just expect it to go. And you can't play too long, but you have to just kind of keep them engaged the whole way. And it's actually a lot of work. So it, well, it's fun. I, I enjoy just seeing, you know, the little kids with, with a great smile and kind of being introduced to instruments. And we make sure to involve them as much as possible. So, so let's go back in time. Let's say, uh, how did Otis Motley get started? Uh, it is a, one of the most popular LA bands around, because wherever you play in LA, it is packed, it is sold out, and you have a very good fan base. Yeah. How did everything get started? We started at a labor protest. Uh, we all knew each other as musicians. We supported this protest by showing up and playing music for the people, and um, they used to have parties, and they needed like a reason to charge $5 at the door, and we were it, and word got out. We started to play a lot of different events like that. And then we started playing clubs in Hollywood, and it kind of took off from there. And then with Ozo Copy, how has that been going? Uh, I mean, the Zona Rosa has done yeah. a lot since we interviewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much covered uh, Immaculate Conception playing at Zona yeah, Rosa yeah, yeah, yeah. earlier this yeah, year. Yeah. So how's that been going with the tie-in and with all the promotion that's been going? You know, it's it's it, it was just one of those things that comes out like out of left field. You know, Michael, who owns Zona Rosa, we've known him for years. We'll talk to him about it. And there's a few of us in the band who are super heavy-duty coffee freaks. So. <laughs> When the idea came up, uh, Will just brought it to us all and we just said, sure, let's see what it's about. And little by little, it's taken off. It's in Whole Foods, there's certain restaurants that carry it. And so little by little, it's just another thing that, um, you know, we can lend our, our, our symbol to and just kind of have a fun, different way of uh, getting the word out about Ozumabe. So how, is it, how does it feel to play in downtown LA once more? Or especially, last, yeah. especially it's your last show of 2012. Yeah, it's always an uh, important show for us at the end of the year, and we always try to do something different. This year, it's it's uh, the theme is Monkey Madness. Uli came up with it, and not everyone knows that also Matni is a monkey on the Astro calendar. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of tried to tie in different elements from different cultures that have the, the theme of monkeys. In it. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's it, you know. it was uh, So it was just kind of a fun, simple way to tie in the name of the band and to get everybody involved. So there's a lot of things that are going to be happening from fan participation, we've got Don Santos, we've got all kinds of things going on. It'll be fun. Yeah. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Uh, Immaculate Conception is a side project band. What are we going to be able to see them back again? You guys just getting back together and playing around LA? Yeah, I, you know, I don't know. We, I do that whenever we get the chance. And really what that's about is it's never the same. So the idea of the Immaculate Conception is that it's a miracle, right? right. <laughs> we don't really even rehearse. I just get musicians that are really good like, mm -hmm. and, and who can who are not afraid to get up on stage and not have a set plan and mm -hmm. be able to figure it out. And that's what I enjoy about it because I think in this band, you know, we, we know songs, we've been playing for years. And so in this other setting, it just gets to be a lot more risky kind of. And 
it's not the same kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. So it's fun and I get to play with musicians that I really respect and really like. And I think it brings me back to just the joy of, of just playing music just for that reason and it's fun. Yeah. Final question. Where are you looking at, what are you looking for in 2013? Or the front of the band and just from yourself as well? Yeah, well we got, the Osamani's got a record uh, that we're starting to record early next year. Um, it's going to be out before the summer. So there's that. That's probably the biggest thing that we have going. Uh, other than that, um, for me, you know, trying to stay healthy. It's hard to do what we do sometimes. It's not like we're, it's hard work or anything, but when you travel like that. Mm -hmm. So so I think that's, that's it seems to be more important to all of us, which is kind of cool because it, it'll allow us to keep playing for years to come. And um, and just, you know, I have two kids in high school and helping them and kind of basic family, father things, and continue to grow as a musician, you know. Um, we just we just played in Mexico City. We played on stage with Alex Sintek, and uh, he wants to do a song. I'm writing songs with Los Lonely Boys. Other people are working on projects for movies. The band is working on projects for TV and movies. And so there's always opportunities we're trying to create musically to just keep ourselves uh, as working musicians. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Rolf, for right. talk, taking the time with us. Yeah, and if you want to learn anything more about Rosa Motley, Raul Pacheco, and the Immaculate Conception, follow Who'sYourMuse.com. Thank you very much for following us in 2012. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and see you in 2013.